Holy rusty metal, Batman! They canceled Batgirl! Hey there, friends. It's your man Z with Our Reviews Will Kill You. And before we get too far into this, be sure to like and subscribe as it helps us greatly. I know everybody's got to say the same thing. But we're going to get right into this story because it's a wild one. If you weren't aware before, there was a Batgirl movie that's been kicking around for many, many years. Apparently, the thing's almost done. Done enough to test shoot or uh, test screen it for fans to see if anybody likes this thing. And here we have a couple articles that are pretty interesting that we could talk about. Just to give a little bit more context as... The cuts continue over at HBO, Discovery, Warner Brothers, whatever's going on there. Let's take a look. And our first article, let's see here, talks about, there's quite a few things getting scrapped. Uh, th there's kind of quotes all over the place as to how much this thing costs. They're saying 70 million, some people are saying 80 million. Some people are saying that Warner Brothers probably saved themselves another $80 million just by canning this thing. Uh, but the they, they're saying, that, I guess the cost had risen even further to $90 million. But Batgirl and Scoob Holiday Haunt scrapped at Warner Brothers. Yeesh! Uh, with the newly installed Warner Brothers, Discovery CEO David Saslav, Saslav? Saslav. 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 Priority, prioritizing cost-cutting measures and refocusing Warners on creating theatrical films rather than projects for streaming has been a priority. Batgirl was budgeted at around $80 million, which costs rising up to 90 due to COVID protocols. Hefty sum. Uh, the Batman had a budget of $185 million in comparison. Uh, Warner Brothers also decided to shelf Scoob Holiday Haunt, which had a budget of $40 million. Batgirl starred, stars, starred, who knows? In the Heights breakouts, uh, Leslie Grace as Barbara Gordon, Batgirl, the first Latina to play the role. I mean, there has there, there's, oh, there's been like one live action Batgirl, so <laughs> maybe there's two. And then this is from the Bad Boys for Life filmmakers, Abdil L. Arby and Blah Falau. Also included Michael Keaton back as Batman, J.K. Simmons as Barbara's father, Commissioner Gordon, Brendan Fraser as the villain, villain Firefly. I'm not going to say, like, I heard some pretty bad things about this. So uh, we do have a little bit more information as we go, but it's, it's fascinating because the Warner Brothers Discovery leadership has been looking to find $3 billion in cost savings after the merger. And uh, they they cut CNN Plus, which cost about three hundred million before pulling the plug. Oh my word! J.J. <laughs> Abrams pricey HBO original Demi Monde, which I would not have paid five cents for, that had a two hundred million dollar plus budget. Just getting rid of all sorts of stuff. Batgirl's been like I said, kicking around. Since 2017, with Joss Whedon originally writing to sign it, uh, these these two new guys boarded on 2021, and uh, they had you know they released photos and all sorts of stuff. I think I even have a video that you can check out about me talking about the casting shot where uh, things didn't look that great. But what gets even more fascinating is we have an article from the Washington Post, or the no, the New York Post, I'm sorry. And they get seen to get a little bit more detail. So let's take a look at that one. Irredeemable Batgirl movie gets shelved after Warner Brothers, despite $70 million price tag. Will we ever see this ever? Is this ever going to pop out? Uh, irredeemable. Why did they call it that? It's, it's uh, again, $70 million budget, but a, this, another source was saying it was more like $100 million, but it was doing test screenings for audiences with an antici anticipation of a late 2022 debut. 
uh, those test screenings were so poorly received by moviegoers that the studio decided to cut its losses and run. They think an unspeakable Batgirl is going to be irredeemable. I, ha I don't think I've ever heard of a movie being so bad that it got completely shelved like this. I mean, that's crazy. Here, uh, <laughs> it's been a months-long walk of shame for the movie. Uh, had not received a single mention at DC's Comic-Con panel. And everybody was saying that DC had a very... Uh, their Comic-Con was, was not very good. People weren't sure what was going on. There was expectations that Henry Cavill would show up, which he didn't. And then you get The Rock getting booed on stage, which we covered in our previous podcast. This whole thing is just... DC's not having a good time right now. And it's a little strange as to what is up. Um... Yeah, they didn't have a single mention in the July San Diego Comic-Con, which is pretty unusual. And then, you know, on the flip side, Marvel announced like a dozen movies and, and all sorts of crazy junk going on. Uh, let's see if there's any more information in here. Uh, we know who starred in it. And I guess this was really attached to a previous... Uh, the Warner Brothers co-chair or then chair Toby Emmerich uh, was considering a theatrical run for the film, but the new new guy in town is saying no, sir, no, sir, no, thank you. Let's see what else. Uh, they shelved the mil uh, multi-million dollar effort would not be unusual because he's a ruthless cost cutter. He's just slashing prices everywhere he can. If you consider it, uh, you know, pat, like Birds of Prey and Suicide Squad were both considered flops, even though people, some people seem to, to like it. And uh, people are pretty much saying DC's disorganized, confusing, and not very profitable mess. Aquaman and Wonder Woman. Uh, Aquaman did very well, but Wonder Woman was a complete disaster. Batman underperformed. Uh, you know, it was it only netted $770 million. And, you know, some people like it. We did reviews on it. But they've really been struggling. You know, even Doctor Strange, which I would not consider nearly on the same level as Batman, made, you know, $955 million versus the Batman. Granted, it was an R rating, so that will hurt it. Uh, I don't know why it was rated R. It really didn't need to be. And somehow, out of all of this, and another story that we've covered is the Ezra Miller Flash Saga. I think they've just dumped so much money into this thing that they cannot walk away from it. And they just have nothing. There's just no way they can abandon, you know, maybe they put 200 million into that movie and they're just like, yeah, we can't give up on it because Ezra Miller is doing everything in his power to get canceled or it's just, he's a hot mess and a disaster. He, they, they're a hot mess. Very, it, it's crazy. The, in June recently, the Standing Rock Sioux Tribal Court issued a order of protection against him for apparently uh, attempting to woo a 18-year-old uh, actor that he's known since 12. It's terrible. So DC's a giant mess. Uh, they're saying that this is the end of the source who gave out all this information said this is the end of DC as a hobby. Uh, there seem to be a lot of egos kicking their way around on this thing that have just been like, ooh, we could make this, or ooh, we could make that. I mean, the whole idea that Joker's going to be a musical. <sniffs> Let's get somebody in here to like organize this thing, not just make whatever random stuff we want. So anyway, uh, that about covers it here. Will, we, will this movie ever see the light of day? Would you watch it if it came out? Would you watch it on streaming? Would you pay to see it? Tell me in the comments below. I'd be curious to know what you're thinking. Anyway, catch our full-length audio podcast. It's on Spotify, Stitcher, iTunes, all those great places for free. You can catch it. We release it every Sunday night. And uh, we do a live stream of it on Friday nights, which is at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come join us. Come join the fun. We have a lot of fun with our chat there. Uh, but in the meantime, I am out to the next one. Thank you.